Ladies and gentlemen, please join me for another Malifaux encounter. Colody's back, and he can't quite believe that he's not fighting Sonya. But before we get into things any further, allow me to introduce the newest recruit to my crew. Say hello to my little friend. And just in case you can't instantly tell, this is Lazarus. The official sculpt, I'm sorry to say, is probably the worst model I've ever seen. It looks like what would happen if you fried a Games Workshop Razor Gore in metal, and then drove a Games Workshop Torox vehicle up its scrotum. Shame on you, weird. So I've been forced to fix things somewhat with a Games Workshop Tau XV25 stealth suit, because those things just look the bee's testicles, and then because the backstory to Lazarus is that he was a guild guard or marshal or something that was turned into a cyborg and went rogue, I've dressed him up in a guild duster and fedora, made out of cloaks from the Games Workshop Chaos Charioteer box set, and the hat I made myself out of modelling clay, which you can probably tell. And if I can find a better hat somewhere, I will. I'm certainly no painter or modeller, but I'm really happy with how this guy turned out. And keep an eye on him in this game, because he's going to get his groove on. Back on the table, let's have a look at what we've got. We have some dense, severe blocking forests, and some ruins, some impassable terrain, some big chunks of hazardous terrain, and some line of sight blocking ridges. The strategy is squatter's rights, and in the scheme pool we have outflank and line in the sand, which synergize with it well, but in my opinion, outflank is just so difficult to do, as you've got to have something left alive and mobile enough to get to these tiny 3 inch scoring zones on either side of the centre line, and I don't tend to find I often have very much left at the end of the game. For a similar reason, the line in the sand I don't like. The middle of the board is where the bulk of my opponent's models are likely to be, so setting down the markers in the first place is going to be hard, and in the likely event that I start to get wiped out, they can get removed at my opponent's leisure. That takes us to assassinate. My opponent's master is likely to be around the middle of the board. I know he's taking 10 thunders. I suspect he's taking Yan Lo, but whatever it is, I just find that Clody doesn't have an easy time removing enemy masters, especially an endurance master like Mr. Yan. That leaves power ritual, which with the Neverborn's maneuverability I'm pretty confident with, and bodyguard, which I absolutely hate, because as, as I said, all my stuff tends to die quite quickly. But I figure it's a better bet than assassinate, so that's what we're going with. My opponent deployed first and waited this flank. He's got two Kamenu. Toshiro with Command the Graves. The Soul Porter, a punk zombie. A Pathfinder, two whatever they're called, traps. A treacherous Shadow Effigy who's playing for the wrong team. And Yan Lo with Fortify the Spirit, Misdirection. And brutal kakahaka um, kakara kari, karaoke, brutal karaoke. That's what we're going with. So here's my crew. I've got Kalodi with strum the threads for obvious reasons. Breathe life to help keep Lazarus alive. And bag of props because I want to try it out, and because I'm hoping it will give me a bit of flexibility to not be so dependent on staying within the bubble. The game plan is based around this piece of terrain, which can block Kalodi from being targeted and snatched away by a Yan Lo, but also allow him to wiggle out to these height 1 edges and strum away at anyone in the area of these squat markers. To help Clody out I've got two of his marionettes which are there for personal puppetry and reaching out to contest these ski markers. I've got the brutal effigy in a support role. I'm going to drop a power ritual marker first turn and then push him up in more of a support range for subsequent turns. And because I reckon that this part of the board is where all the action is going to be, I can't tell that he's not going to be able to slip something through to go remove my marker. So on the other side of the board we have another marionette, who's going to make double sure by dropping another scheme marker in this corner. Then run up and hopefully try to grab these. Obviously the Corophy is going to be the one to complete my power ritual, running up this exposed flank. And finally this group here of my Beckoner, Doppelganger and Lazarus is going to be something of a power node, with Beckner and Doppelganger dragging models off the squat markers into a grenade party in Stringfest. Lazarus also happens to be within 8 inches of Kalodi, so he can assimilate my will and move these guys around. That's the plan, let's see how it goes. First turn, great hand. Yan Lo gets initiative, and this was brilliant. Yan Lo discards a card to gain chi. He focuses and then charges his own trap. He hits it, jiggling the cards for severe damage, and gets another chi. He hits it again, and more card jiggling means he kills it and gets another chi. 
So in the first activation he's already pumped himself up to maximum casting effectiveness. Great move. A little way further into the turn I've dropped off both my power ritual markers, put Fear Not the Sword on Kolodi. The Soul Porter has pushed both Tushiro and um, Yan Lo forwards, so I've moved Lazarus, so he's got a nice firing lane onto these markers. And I'm doing my thing where if something wants to come and get him, it's going to be really AP intensive. But before moving Lazarus, I used his zero action to assimilate my will from Kalodi and move the Corophy up, so that it's now in range to activate and first turn flip the squat marker. And then I just twiddle my thumbs with um, Lazarus's last AP. And this was something I really did a lot in this game, particularly in this first um, turn, where it really felt like I just wasn't using models' action points efficiently. But thinking about this, if they're in the position that I need them to be in, then that's all that I need to do. And I think the way to think about this is, so, the model can be where I want it to be without using all the AP that I could use for its initial deployment. So maybe what I should do instead is deploy it further away from where it needs to be and mask my plans for it by not being so near its final location, if that makes any sense. Okay, that's all said. So what's about to happen in this picture is my beckoner is about to beckon to Shiro. She'll fail with one action, but succeed with the other. Toshiro then activates and moves back into the safety of this tree line, but unfortunately for him, doesn't get out of the Beckoner's range. So Kolodi then activates, goes fast, uses my will on the Beckoner to pull Toshiro out, and then thanks to stealing focus from one of the marionettes, and my rather tasty control hand, he managed to do double severe damage on Toshiro, and get the slow and idle hands triggers off. And without Chakai being in his crew, this guy is now effectively paralysed for next turn. So by the end of the first turn, the Corophy's moved up and flipped the scheme marker, squatter marker, sorry. The Kameno have popped out to start to challenge it for this board quarter, which I imagine was their plan anyway to come and get these ones. I could be wrong. This marionette has moved up so that it's in position to go and flip this squat marker in one activation. All my doppelganger did was move to here and twiddle its thumbs, which was really stupid. I knew I could probably hit Toshiro and finish him off by copycatting Lazarus's grenade launcher. However, I decided to take the risk and keep him alive, making the most out of Glody's triggers, but more importantly, he's now bait for my trap. I don't really know what he does, but I know he's important and can buff and summon and ship. My hope is that it will lure Yan Lo out into the open, and at this point in time, I think Yan's healing ability uses up his chi. So I'm hoping that he's gonna waste his AP and chi on healing Toshiro, who I'll then kill by unloading with Kalodi and then two grenade launchers. Unfortunately, I was to find that healing doesn't use up chi, but the main mistake I made was not using the doppelganger's ability to beckon him closer and move him even further away from Yan Lo. Silly, unforced error. Turn two, somewhat average hand. I get the initiative without having to cheat, and I quickly try to correct my mistake. The beckoner beckons Toshiro closer, and then because I'm a dumbass, I push back to here, Realise I can't beckon again without gumming up my marionette by bringing Toshiro into engagement range, and so just walk back over here. Again, just a silly waste of AP. We'll skip forward a bit. The corophy has gone racing up 14 inches into the corner, and forced one of the Kameno to run off and tackle it. The marionette was able to go fast, skirt round Toshiro, and claim my second squat marker, and the second Kameno was forced to use all its actions to get just get into combat with it. The soul port is creeping up, as is one of my marionettes. This marionette's gone focused and defensive, and the Brutals feared not the sword Kurodi and gone double de uh, focused. Most importantly, however, Yan Lo has been forced out of cover. He healed Toshiro for damage with the Red Joker, took a pot shot at Kurodi, who surprisingly won the duel, and then flipped the squat marker. And he's very wisely ascended to both Ash and Spirit. He might even have put Ash on in the first turn which is very wise when facing Kalodi, and basically with those upgrades and the Shadow Effigy's buff, he doesn't really give a damn about what I can do to him. So Kalodi activates now. He's been dragged forward by this marionette, and my plan is to use him to kill the dog, and if I've got any AP left I may be pot shot to Shiro. What I want to do with Shiro is to steal his activation, walk him closer to Yan Lo, then use Doppelganger and Lazarus to pelt him with blast templates and put them on Yan. It's really quite risky, and I know I shouldn't be toying with such a dangerous piece as Toshiro, but I'm pretty sure there's nothing that can actually heal Yan in this crew, and I reckon he's about to get pretty dangerous, so I need him more manageable. However, as it happens, I get 
the my bidding trigger off on my first shot against the dog. And this changes things. So I then use its action to walk into blasting range of Yan Lo. I then pile the rest of my actions into Shishiro. And despite the fact he's stoning furiously, I knock him down to one wound. A black joker really didn't help my opponent at this point. And throughout this game, fate just wasn't on his side at the crucial moments he needed it to be. And I feel that pain, man. So then the Pathfinder moves up and hides behind the dog and its bigger base. Good move there. That is, unless you're expecting a ton of blasting damage to come your way. Which my opponent wasn't, unfortunately. Can't know every model in the game. And very fortunately for me, Lazarus's grenade launcher has slipped his notice. This might also be an opportunity to mention that my opponent is steadily moving this trap along the squatter's rights line to help him hold his objectives, which again is just a great idea. The punk zombies flipped this squad as right marker, and between it and the shadow effigy, they're just pumping out scheme markers on the center line. He's got three in this terrain area alone now. And it's only turn two. Really did not appreciate how excellent the effigy is for lying in the sand. So Lazarus goes. He hits the Kameno and gets a moderate on a negative flip. He then blasts onto the Pathfinder and Yan Lo, and with the second shot, he gets a severe with a negative flip. Fate is on my side. So the Kameno's dead, the Pathfinder's on his last wound, Yan Lo's taken 5 damage, and technically I think the trap should be dead because he, uh, Lazarus ignores armour with Retribution's eye, but I think we forgot about that. Never mind, I am not going to complain about this result. So after that fantastic bit of sharpshooting by Lazarino, I rub salt in the wound by casting Despicable Promises with either the Doppelganger or the Beckoner, I can't remember which one, onto Shiro, killing him with its minimum damage 1. Absolutely outstanding. And with that we move on into turn 3. The Thunders get the initiative with the 13 and I decide not to cheat in, so Yan Lo goes first. He scoops up the Marinette and drops it in the trap. He's on something like 6 Chi by now, so he grabs his bone ascendant upgrade and then teleports right into the midst of my power node. He hasn't got enough AP left for his, um, what's it called, Hunpo Assault, so he plays some brutal karaoke and does the Curse of Terracotta instead, which surprisingly only the Doppelganger fails. So here basically my effigy's moved up and done its stuff, his pathfinder's killed my marionette, ignoring it's hard to kill, and leapfrog the trap. I've claimed my third squat marker, and the Korofi over the past couple of turns has managed to scuttle away from the Kamenu, drop a scheme marker for power ritual, and get back in with the Chinese restaurant statue. And they're happily knocking one damage off each other at a time, because that's where all my shit cards are going, into Korofi's attack clips. Beckoner shows her class by luring the Pathfinder out and then hitting it with Despicable Promises to kill it. Absolutely fantastic, that model. And what I realise here is that while Yan Lo's tying up my three very expensive models, and I'm terrified of hitting him because I don't really know what the misdirection thing means, apart from the fact I'm almost certainly going to hit myself, all Lazarus has to do is survive, which with Armour 2 and a cheatable healing flip, zero action, he is fairly tanky, but my Beckoner and Doppelganger can still be influencing the rest of the board, or at least in the centre, and doing their job. At the same time, Yan Lo isn't running around dicking my scheme runners, so actually I'm kind of thinking I've locked him down. So that's what I was thinking at this point during the game, and I was happy to have my models there, but I couldn't think of a way to get them out of it. I mean, Kalodi's got his Breathe Life action, but it would only work on the Beckoner, and that's all I could think of at the time. However, with hindsight, there's a ton of stuff I could do here. His misdirection only works for defence jewels, and I've got plenty of casting willpower attacks. Between the Doppelganger, the Beckoner and Kalodi, I can put out 9 casting willpower jewels a turn. We'd be doing 1 damage at a time, and it looks like he's got 4 soul stones left. But we're casting 6 and 7, and he's only willpower 8 on a tome, and he can't have that many of them. Oh, and Lazarus could be assimilating Kalodi's attack for 10 shots a turn and still going double defensive. So if I really had to, in 2 turns this guy would be dead. But that is a humongous amount of AP. What I could also have done was use the Beckoner to beckon the Doppelganger, push 4 inches out, and then beckon Lazarus out. Yan Lo would then have to keep wasting his AP to catch up with them. But having him out and running around is actually probably more dangerous for me, so I'd rather just keep him here when all's said and done. Sorry that was a bit long-winded, but I you know, just wanted to go talk through my thought process. With the centre weakened, the punk zombie moves out to hold it, trailing scheme markers thanks to the Shadow Effigy. And this is the opportunity my marionette has been waiting for. It goes fast and runs up around here to start picking stuff up. The Korofi and Komenu continue to wrestle over this power marker. And then the Soul Porter sprints up, engaging the marionette. Not sure what his plan is. I guess it wants to weaken the marionette 
to make the punk zombies progress across the board towards an outflank or deny Scott's right's position easier. Or maybe it's got some plan it can do with what's his face, Yan Lo. But whatever it is, I'm not having it. And the game against Padita taught me that when you get the opportunity to kill a support peon, you kill that support peon. Fortunately, I remember it's got three wounds and incorporeal. So Kalodi goes fast and kills it in one hit with a pull the strings. I then spend a soul stone to summon the marionette from the scrap marker. My will it next to the squat marker and then it activates with its one action to flip it, denying my opponent a point this turn. Frickin' hell, this is only turn four. Sorry guys, I feel I've rambled on a bit. Anyway, there's my hand. Both jokers, oh yeah. I win the initiative without cheating and try to get rid of this Kamenu and secure my power ritual and fail. The bad cards have got to come out somewhere. Shadow FG takes the opportunity to kill my marionette and protects all its schemy scheminess. Brutal goes, zeroes Kalodi, moves up and focuses. Then accomplices Kalodi. I spend a soul stone, raise another marionette from a scrap marker and dink it to there with my will. And then beat on the punk zombie, cheating in the red joker for damage, putting it on its last wound and slowing it. I'm feeling pretty smug of myself. I know these things are supposed to be pretty brutal in combat, but I'm pretty sure it can't even kill a marionette now. And this is when the zombie rudely introduces me to its slice and dice. Surprisingly, both marionettes pass their defence and Kalodi fails. I take my three damage like a man puppet, running away home slightly into a better position. And at this point I realise I don't have a personal puppet anymore. And it would have been great just to move this thing into, con into contact with those scheme markers. But oh well, lessons learned. Yan Lo continues singing his karaoke, but he's really not doing that much damage. Particularly as Lazarus keeps ignoring some of it with armour and then healing up the rest. The Beckoner then double lures the punk zombie, stupidly forgetting I could have attacked with the one of the actions. Kameno fails to bring down the Korofi. I love the Korofi so much. Doppelganger covers the Beckoner's mistake, mimicking despicable promises and bringing down the zombie. And the marionettes run around removing scheme markers and such. Lazarus just goes double defensive and heals. Turn 5, forgot to take a picture of my hand, but I won the initiative without cheating. And my hand was pretty good. I think I stoned for cards at one point during this game, it might have been this turn. And basically I've got three character cards. And Kalodi just annihilates the Shadow Effigy, even though it flipped a red joker for its defence one time. I then waste an AP, my willing this marionette up to here, when what I should have done is just walk up which would have allowed at least one of them to go fast and get a power ritual marker in this corner. Yan Lo hits a rather piercing note with his karaoke, red jokering the damage on the beckoner, and she goes down after a good fight. He hits the doppelganger, leaving her on one wound, but despite his best efforts can't do more than three damage on the defensive Lazarus. The Kamenu fails for the last time to bring down the Korofi, securing my power ritual. The marionettes remove the last of the scheme markers, it's a bit of a comedy of errors at one point, where one of them runs around, gets caught in the trap, because I'm a dumbass, and then has to drag along back this marionette, who then runs in and finishes the job. To end the game with a bit of fun, Lazarus bayonets Yan Lo, flipping a four of rams. Yan Lo cheats lower, and so I hit the doppelganger with the unload ordnance trigger, killing the doppelganger and blasting onto Yan Lo. So Lazarus has managed to put an impossible to wound incorporeal master onto half damage by the end of the game. And I feel there's a moral victory there, because after he heals, he's only taken one damage, securing me full points for bodyguard. And there we go guys, there's the end of the game, what a cracking match. Obviously I had quite a guilty amount of fun. Huge amount of respect to my opponent, he took things in his stride, never gave up and just had a great attitude. And I hope I can be as cool when fate turns and spits on me. I've kind of discussed things as I went along, but I will say that my opponent was planning to keep the effigy alive, drop more scheme markers, and so probably pick up a point for Line in the Sand and Outflank. That effigy really is a great ski marker dropper. He also could have Hunpo assaulted and removed this marker, which I didn't see coming, but it just goes to show how important it is to have that second marker in your own table quarter. Final thoughts, Lazarus, Beckoner and Doppelganger trio are freaking amazing. A fast Clody with bag of props and a brutal sidekick are just outstandingly reliable, really gets the most out of both of them and makes the whole crew feel that much more flexible, because I'm not worried about keeping everything within 6 inches of Kalodi to make the most of Fated. And Korofi, what can I say, a little game breaker. Both she and the doppelganger are models I would probably stretch to paying 8 points for, and there's the sign of an auto-include. But anyway, brilliant game, thank you for watching, and take care.